We're shaking people. Back with another reaction, back with some more Alphaville. And we're going back to the 1986 album Afternoons in Utopia. And the next track is called Lassie Come Home. I mean, it's hilarious. Um, you know, I suppose on some level, um, whether as analogy or directly, I suppose I would be more inclined to think analogy, you know, something or someone that always figures out what's going on and, you know, is there to help or to, you know, root out what's actually happened. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's going to reference the uh, canine character Lassie. And I think, isn't that phrase, Lassie Come Home, is, you know, something that's said regularly. Maybe that was even, you know, the name of one of the versions of the show or... I don't know if they did feature films. I'm, they probably did. Either way, I don't know the franchise in any significant or meaningful way. I've probably seen like clips here and there, um, but yeah, I don't really know the show. So if there are direct references, you know, to characters like human names that come from that um, creative franchise, then I would not be able to pick them up, or you know, at the very least, I wouldn't know who they're referencing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, again, I feel like maybe it's more likely to be an analogy or a metaphor for someone that, again, um, bears the traits or, you know, acts in a way like the, the noble canine Lassie. So let's find out what it is. This is Lassie Comes Home, or Come Home, sorry. Lassie Come Home by Alphaville on the 1986 album Afternoons in Utopia.
specifically uh, Scottish, but it feels like you should say that in some form of Scottish accent. Regardless, um, I'd be more inclined to think it's like a cheeky reference to, you know, the fictional character, the canine. But again, I, it occurred to me that it could be a usage which, you know, predates the, the character, but ultimately, yeah, I don't know. Um, either way, I'm not sure what's happening, but the idea that, you know, you'll swing open your door and shout it out, shout it out, Lassie, come home. I don't know, I guess, you know, the idea of, like, things coming back to the way they should be, or places, you know, f coming back into where they belong, where they fit, I don't know, um, not really sure what's happening, but either way, I did enjoy the vocals, but as I said, the main, like, verse vocals were really sort of buried in the mix of sounds, so it was hard to, like, hear some of the lines, like, I didn't, you know, I heard little bits and pieces here and there, but it was the sort of more forceful and passionate and seemingly like either doubled or maybe multiple people in the group were singing, but there were those passionate vocal parts um, and those were a bit louder in the mix. Those were a bit easier to hear, um, including that, you know, the, I guess the chorus. Um, but either way, uh, sonically a cool tune, another one that was sort of like a, a synth symphony or, you know, a concerto, I suppose. It is funny, that's like the third or fourth time that's happened where a tune will go like two minutes or more 
without having any vocals, and it's like, man, I guess this is an instrumental. And within like 10 seconds, the vocals start. And it's like, all right, all right, that's funny song. I see what you did there. Um, so we can add this one to the mix for that. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Like some of the song titles on this, you know, Universal Daddy and um, you know, Lassie Come Home, which is funny because Universal Daddy, you know, people were commenting on some of the themes and the lyrics the way they see it. it you know, it wasn't maybe as silly like as it <clears throat> seemed. Um, like on, on the outset of things, you know, it just seemed like a, an odd phrase. And <clears throat> people pointed out that, you know, people are looking for, you know, a set of ideas or something to follow. Um, and it, it became like a bit more apparent, like the nuance of that. So again, maybe there is something, you know, more profound or significant going on here. I just couldn't quite latch onto it in part because I couldn't hear all the vocals clearly. But um, either way, another cool tune. I'm enjoying the atmosphere of this album. In a way, it's sort of reminding me as we go through it a bit. I'm going through Erasure's self-titled album, 95, so like almost a decade later. <clears throat> but people have pointed out as I've gone through it that that album is maybe the most experimental and expansive and sort of, you know, non-conventional that Erasure got. <clears throat> and I'm feeling a bit of that on this album. It feels like more than the previous album where there's just these like super, like perfectly crafted you know, synth pop like hits, this feels a bit more experimental, a bit more expansive. Um, so yeah, again, maybe that's just, you know, I've got so many different deep dives going on, my brain is trying to find connections where maybe they don't exist, but um, as we've gone through this album, it does feel like they're trying to explore the space and be a bit more experimental. So let me know what you think. I will see you next time. Peace.